gentle ones, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power and when we gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From our Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, worship at Christ Lutheran Church on this third Sunday of Advent. The days are rushing quickly by, aren't they? I noticed uh, as we began, uh, the name of your uh, next interim pastor was on the screen. Her name is Joy. And you will be overjoyed uh, to have her uh, with you for the next several months. She's a, a good friend. I've worked with her for a number of years. Uh, she'll be just what you need to carry you the next couple of steps until you select a, a new senior pastor. So welcome, uh, Pastor Joy. Her, the first sighting of Pastor Joy will be Wednesday evening at the big WOW Christmas event. So not only uh, will she be there, but there'll be kind of fun and games for everyone. A picture a booth with Santa, uh, card making projects, hot chocolate cookies, ornament decorating. Artie will be in the narthex playing the piano. It'll be a, a really a fun time uh, for everyone. So join us on Wednesday evening for a while this week. Those who um, are interested in being part of a blue Christmas worship service, we invite you to this evening at 6.30 either to come in person or to watch us on Zoom. This is a special service for those who have difficulty kind of getting through the Christmas season because of grief or loss or uh, some other uh, thing that has happened in their life that makes life difficult. So uh, we invite you to tune in for that. The Stepping Stone Monthly Meal. Uh, we have plenty of people now to deliver the meals and we are not in need of food, so thank you very much. That's all taken care of. Uh, if you'd like to be part of the task force that makes some suggestions for the use of the uh, education wing, please get in touch with uh, church council members. We'll be talking about this Tuesday night at our council meeting. So if you're interested in that, uh, pr please bring your name forward. Next Sunday, um, a Christmas drama production at both services. Uh, Chris O'Brien has been working diligently on this. Um, you're used to the uh, kind of production that she does and she's put herself out uh, again once more for you this uh, year until she finally retires now at the end of December. Christmas Eve worship services are listed for you, two in the afternoon, one at 10 o'clock in the evening, and then only one service on Sunday the 26th. I believe that's all the uh, other announcements that I'll make, but I do want to uh, let you know, if you've not seen the prayer chain, uh, that Pastor Del Schnate, who served you here for a number of years as associate pastor, died yesterday morning. Uh, and uh, I've been in touch with his family. They say that services are pending. Uh, because of COVID, they don't want a, a, a large gathering of people. So we'll let you know exactly uh, what uh, the service schedule will be for uh, Pastor Dell. 
And then this morning, I'm uh, bringing you uh, greetings from Bishop uh, Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the ELCA, and she has a little video clip uh, that we would like to share with you as she greets congregations uh, throughout the, the U.S. So, Chance and Company, if you could roll that for us. Thank you. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still is This is our second pandemic Christmas. We thought this would be over so long ago, and still we wear masks, we're physically distanced. We can't be with friends and family as we used to do. And also there's so much that's broken in this world. So much that tells us why have hope? Just give up. But we have a hope that's stronger than any of this, stronger even than death. The hope of God come in the form of a tiny baby, a helpless child, nevertheless who grew to a man and in his fragile strength, was willing to die on the cross and was raised again. I don't know what next Christmas will bring. I don't know what New Year's will bring, but I do know we have hope. St. Paul put it this way, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas, dear church. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. everyone. Um, my name is Andrew Kane. I'm the Children and Household Ministry Innovator here at CLC, and it's my pleasure you to welcome in to our Children's Christmas program this morning. Um, you'll see it's quite a unique program. We haven't bring, been able to bring our children's choir back, so we've uh, actually gotten the opportunity this year to explore more of the story of Advent. Um, and you also see that about half of our kids are here in person with us today, and half of our kids um, have pre-recorded from home. Um, it is certainly a time of uncertainty, but the really good news is that Jesus was born for uncertain times. The stories of Advent are stories for hard times. Jesus was born amid upheaval and historical change and among people who felt powerless and broken. 
But when the world feels hopeless, Advent reminds us that God is with us. In chaos, God is with us. In suffering, God is with us. In uncertainty, God is with us. In whatever our church endures, God is with us. Our children's Christmas program today invites you to explore the ways in which Emmanuel, God with us, brings hope, peace, joy, and love to our church and community. Our children have worked very hard to create an uplifting and meaningful service for you today. So sit back and enjoy God with us. Jacob, Jacob had Judah and his brothers. Judah and Tamar had Perez, Perez had Hezron, Hezron had Aram, Aram had Amminadab, Amminadab had Nashon, Nashon had Salmon, Salmon and Rahab had Boaz, Boaz and Ruth had Obed, Obed had Jesse, Jesse had Davy, David, and David became king. David and Uriah had Solomon. Solomon had Rehoboam. Rehoboam had Abijah. Abijah had Asa. Asa had Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had jo Joram. Am Amon had Josiah. Josiah had Jehoiakim and his brothers. And then the people were taken into the Babylonian exile. When the Babylonian exile ended, Jeconiah had Shealtiel, 
GL2 had Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel had Abayad. Abayad had Eliakim. Eliakim had Azur. Azur had Zedok. Zedok had Akim. Akim had Eliud. Eliud had Eliezer. Eliezer. Eliezer had Matin. Matin had Jacob. Jacob had Joseph, Mary's husband, the Mary who gave birth to Jesus. There are 14 generations from Abraham to David, another 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and yet another 14 from the Babylonian exile to Christ. Sometimes when we tell the story of Jesus, we begin with his mother Mary. That is a good place to start, but the Gospel of Matthew begins the story thousands of years before Mary was born. Matthew begins with a list of all the ancestors who came before Jesus. It is a long list with names you may have never heard before. There were so many years and so many generations between Abraham and Jesus. Throughout those generations, there were ups and downs for the Jewish people. The people of Israel experienced slavery, freedom, prosperity, suffering, and exile. There were times they almost lost hope, but God was with them. If you study Matthew's list carefully, you will find names of admirable people with integrity, problematic people who caused suffering, and people from other countries who never expected to find themselves in Israel's story. God was present with all of them, showing the way whether they chose the best path or not. Matthew's list reminds us that even if our stories are imperfect or take unexpected turns, there is hope for our future because God is with us. of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph but before they lived together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace planned to dismiss her quietly But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been sp spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did it as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and named him Jesus. There was a man named Joseph who was going to marry a girl named Mary. After marriage, Joseph hoped they would have children together. Joseph was not planning on being a father before they were married. And when he heard Mary was going to have a baby, he was afraid maybe Joseph did not understand. There are many ways to be a family. He was not at peace with this new plan. In fact, he started thinking about ways he could change the plan. At peace, did you feel nervous? God knew that Joseph was feeling nervous and an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, do not be afraid to embrace a new, this, wait. The dream says, do not be afraid, embrace the new plan. This message must have given Joseph, Joseph peace about the new plan because he, he woke up, he married Mary, and committed himself to be a father even though our plans changed and unexpected things happened. God is always with us like Joseph, we can. Find peace knowing that we are not alone when plans change. It just doesn't feel like Christmas at all It's so hard to forget about all that went on Some friends lost their jobs and some family too And some people said it was all down to you but I know we meant you well, you're one of us You left your throne to bear our scars No Christmas lights may lose their spark And winter's cold may break our hearts Oh, Christmas means Emmanuel time after all the carols are soaring the fires roaring on this year had its trials but sweet mercies too glad tidings of joy and they're all down to you but I know we meant you well, you're one of us You left your throne to bear our scars No Christmas lights may lose their spark And winter's cold may break our hearts But Christmas means Emmanuel, you're one of us Yes, Christmas means Emmanuel, you're one of us. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth.
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. If Mary had visited Elizabeth during our modern times, Elizabeth might have picked her up at the airport. Elizabeth would have been waiting with flowers or balloons, watching for her cousin Mary to appear. And when Elizabeth saw Mary walking towards her, pulling her rolling suitcase behind her, Elizabeth's heart would have leaped with joy. And baby John inside her would have bounced around knowing that something exciting was happening. Mary would have picked her up, picked up her speed, laughing and jogging to meet her beloved Elizabeth. And they would have hugged and kissed each other. They would have probably been noisy, shouting with happiness. Anyone else at the airport would have seen and heard their contagious joy. It feels good to watch other people reunite after a long time apart. The joy grows between them and it inspires onlookers to feel joy too. We can relate when we see this because we know what it feels like to be with some with someone we care about and who cares about us. It is like electricity passing between us when we are with someone we love. Some people would call that electric feeling of love between people. The Holy Spirit. When God is present with us through the Holy Spirit, we are filled with joy. Elizabeth and Mary show us that when we are with people we love, God is there too. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, 
He is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judah, Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. And then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke throughout the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy conveyance. The oath he steady swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of sins, by the tender mercy of God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The children grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in wilderness in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. When you were little and we were learning about the world around you, your grown ups spent a lot of time teaching you to be gentle. The probability said things like use Santa hands with the cat, use soft touch please, and hands are for hugging. You had to learn that no matter how much you wanted to squeeze your new kitten or bounce your baby sibling, you had to be gentle to, sh to show love. Know you are older and know you should be gentle with animals, babies, and how you treat other people. Of course, it isn't always to be easy to be gentle, even for grown-ups, but it is an important way to show love. Another word for gentle is tender. When someone is showing tenderness, they respect the body and spirit of someone else. They interact with them gently and with consent. God sh showed Zachariah and Elizabeth tenderness when their baby John was born. Zachariah could see God in John's love. God's love so inspired Zachariah that he spoke a prophecy, a threshold prayer he used the word tender to describe God's love. John grew up to be an important friend to Jesus. He had the opportunity to show tenderness to Jesus and God was with them.
Ba. Ba. Ba 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 ba. 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 In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Merry Christmas, or as the angels proclaimed, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all people. We celebrate Christmas because God is with us. Look around you this morning. Is God with you? Can you see the Spirit of God around you? The Holy Spirit is invisible. God is with us, but we cannot see God, or can we? We can't really take a picture of the electricity we feel when we love God and we love our neighbors. We cannot draw a picture of hope, peace, or joy either. Even though we cannot see God with us, and even though we cannot see hope, peace, joy, or love, we can look around and see people and things that represent hope, peace, joy, and love to us. We can even see hope, peace, joy, and love when we look at ourselves. The meaning of Christmas is that God is with us. Then every good thing, every lovely moment, and every beautiful feeling we have is a little bit of Christmas. It does not end on the holiday of December 25th. The invisible spirit who guides us tenderly each day never leaves us behind. And that is why we call Jesus Emmanuel. God is with us. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout. 
God's in the salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Or go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on. Oh, God is with us through these amazing young people, the ones here and at home on the screens, and all of the adults who showed up to journey with them all and learning all these parts and everything, and the staff and everything. So one more round of applause. Thank you all so much. Well, as we are in this continued season of waiting and preparation and um, just for Christmas and everything, buying all those gifts, there are some people who are working really hard at school to finish finals and even preparing for graduation. Um, so we celebrate with two college grads that we know of and those who um, are unknown to us, but Shadrach and Jenna this, this December in their college graduation. So this is a blessing for all graduates in this season. So you know some things. You've also noticed how much there still is to discover. You are both humbled and emboldened by this gain and ground. What's next? Do not be fooled by the trite questions, the expectations about pressing forward. There is no right answer to how you can keep becoming. There is no degree or title that can fulfill all of who you are. Delight in the wisdom and those who share it. Invest in the service and those who need it. Be thankful for the support and those who give it. You are being sent to speak what is true, to do what is kind, to give what is necessary, so that your knowledge and mystery are alive in the world for all to share. Amen. All right, and now there was one announcement that Pastor Galen missed this morning. And that is an announcement. Um, gratitude and thanks for Pastor Galen for his ministry and leadership here. So stand it up. And while we're at it, to God, right? <clears throat> Thank you so much um, for that wonderful affirmation. It's been uh, my pleasure to be with you these past six months. And as I said earlier, I know that uh, Pastor Joy will serve you well in the months to come. Hopefully it won't be too long until you can welcome a new senior pastor here at, at Christ Lutheran Church. Communion uh, today will be as we've done in the past several weeks. We've very carefully prepared uh, the communion. Uh, one person only has filled the cups and gotten the, uh, the bread ready, so uh, we are as careful as, of that as possible. If you would like to receive um, communion with these little prepackaged cups that you've grown so fond of uh, over the last month, uh, take one from the basket in the center, otherwise you can come to either of the stations for communion. Uh, there's grape juice available. If you uh, wish only a blessing, uh, please put your hands together like this and bow your head and we will give you a blessing as part of the communion service today. This meal is hosted by our Lord Jesus. We are the privileged guests, all of us, are invited uh, without exception. And now we pray. Holy One, the beginning and the end, 
the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this covenant is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. Make your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen.
and the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Hear the benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.